All right, post-trib moment number 34. Again, we have another desperate uh, attempt to cover up what the Bible's really teaching. Just explicitly left out here in Mark 13. Why did God purposely decide to leave out that phrase in Mark 13? Well, maybe the answer's found at the end of the chapter in Mark 13, 37. He's talking about the, you know, remembering or the pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And from Matthew chapter 24 is what he's talking about there because that points directly at a Jewish audience. Okay, but let's continue. When the Bible says, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. So it really falls apart. When okay, now this has been covered before, but I'll just say this. Um, what I say unto you, to the Jews there, I say unto all. We'll just go along with his argument there for a minute. Um, he's saying that everybody should watch. What does that have to do with the rapture? What does this, how does this disprove a pre-tribulation rapture? You know, people looking for the second coming should watch. People looking for the rapture should watch. You know, at the beginning of the tribulation. This doesn't prove anything. But what it does, he's trying to get rid of this right here. The Sabbath day from Matthew chapter 24. But let's continue here. And the preacher rapture crowd says, well, the mention of the Sabbath day in Matthew 24 proves that he's only talking to the Jews when in Mark 13 he leaves out the phrase neither on the Sabbath day and not only that he says the same thing in verse 24 but in those days after that tribulation the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken and then shall they see the son, the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory and then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. So you've got a post-trib rapture in Matthew 24 and in Mark 13. In Matthew 24, gearing it to the Jews, quote-unquote, he mentions the Sabbath, if that's, if that's how you want to interpret that. But in Mark 13, he specifically... You know, uh, uh, gearing it towards the, the Jews, you know, the Sabbath there, if, you want to have, if that's how you want to interpret it, how else could you interpret it? The Sabbath day is not mentioned for a Christian. Let me just show you real quick here. Romans chapter 13. Look at verse 9. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Okay? Keeping the Sabbath day is not a requirement for a Christian in the church age. So who is Jesus referring to in Matthew 24? He's referring to the Jews. Okay, he's not proving anything here. He's desperately trying to cling to a false teaching. Specifically leaves that phrase out. So that is a weak argument to say it's talking only to the Jews. In Mark 13, he said, I'm speaking to all. Speaking to all to watch. Not to keep the Sabbath day. Okay, not to that your flight be not in the winter. He's, he's not speaking to all in the sense of all the little things there in, in Matthew chapter 24. And let me show you something else about Mark 13 that little false prophet Stevie Anderson there doesn't like to deal with. Why didn't he cover this? About in the synagogues ye shall be beaten. Uh, I don't know too many Christians that are being beaten in synagogues or that even worship in synagogues. How about this one? Let them in Judea flee to the mountains. What are Christians doing in Judea? See, he doesn't like to talk about stuff like this. Because it proves that the coming, quote-unquote, tribulation time period is actually the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for Israel, not the church.